Hi, this is Gary Lucas with Obsidian Painting here. Uh, this is the second part of the painting of the Sanguinor Wings. Um, this is the highlighting part. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, the first step is once you've done all the shading, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take pure Codex Gray and I'm going to thin it down. And you want it to actually be thinner than uh, the shading. So in shading we did about three parts water to one part paint. Uh, now we're going to use probably four to five parts water to one part paint. And the reason for that is is it uh, what I find is brighter colors so white, gray, uh, bleached bone, just just brighter colors tend to leave more of a chalky effect and you'll see that throughout this video and I'll, I'll show you guys how to fix that um, but they leave kind of a chalky effect and one of the ways to kind of combat that is to just thin the paint out more uh, and that should help a little bit. Now this is just pure Codex Gray and uh, for those who are wondering uh, if you didn't catch it in the last video I'm using my Raphael Kalinsky Sable Brush. Uh, I think it's a size 0 but it could possibly be my size 1. And uh, the technique is pretty much really simple. It's glazing uh, I had someone mention in a previous video that this was feathering. Uh, and once again, like, you know, everyone learns different ways. I'm not saying that uh, what I say is, like, 100% correct. This is just how I know it. Um, so, I wouldn't call this feathering because to me, feathering is you put some paint on the model and then you kind of pull the paint out and you draw the uh, the pigment towards uh, the blended area but here I'm not actually blurring the line where I want it to be blended I'm actually pushing the pigment to where I want the pigment uh, and that's kind of the difference because you could do feathering with uh, actually some without watering down your paint uh, Jawa Balls is actually a good example of that if you guys want to check that out. But uh, I would call this glazing. Uh, because to me it's like glazing, I'm just doing it... kind of repetitively. And that to me... Uh, changes it from being glazing to be kind of like multiple glazing or something because normally glazing is just the tinting of the color and I just keep going until I get uh, a solid color I guess uh, so now what I did was I added some fortress gray to the codex gray and that's gonna just keep uh, brightening up the color as you can see the blend isn't uh, perfectly smooth and that's because one, I'm kind of rushing the process for the video, and two, because once you get into brighter colors, it's going to be a little chalky. But uh, the very last step is going to kind of fix everything. And uh, as I said, that'll clearly be later on in the video. This video is actually going to be um, 18 minutes long or something like that. And the reason for that is because the last step is actually so important. I left it at being a six minute long segment. Remember to water down your paints and wipe your brush off. Dip your brush in the pigment and in the paint, but then make sure to wipe it off on a piece of paper towel. What that's going to do is it's going to ensure the fact that... Uh, one, you don't get splotchiness, you don't get a lot of chalkiness, and two, it's going to help with blending, because if you leave the paint on the brush and don't wipe off, when you bring it to the br uh, the figure and the model, uh, it's going to just all run off, and you're going to get uh, paint pooling in areas, and you don't want that. You want to control it, and you want it to be as thin as possible. 
right? As you see, I, I've, I'm probably painting thousands of layers on these wings because I paint a layer and it dries within a second. See, look at that. Then it's dry. There you go, right? That's how fast that was because we're using such thin paint. And look, see? See how fast that was? Right before your eyes it dried. Dried. Draw, dry, dry, draw. There you go. Um, <laughs> another thing to note is uh, to test kind of like how good your consistency of paint is to water, by the time you finish your brush stroke, where you started your brush stroke should already be drying. And uh, so in the previous kind of little segment, I, I kind of had gone up, uh, added more Fortress Gray, and uh, I think I'd gone to Pure Fortress Gray, or this may be Pure Fortress Gray, I don't remember. Um, but once, it, like, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. It's really not complicated. And you could switch this out for any color combination. You could do... Um, blue just start with kind of like a mid-tone blue like enchanted blue uh, shade by adding black to that and highlight by adding brighter blues and then finally a little bit of white you could do red you could do green doesn't matter the technique stays the same for every color the only thing that changes is the color And you may notice that these are small little segments. All I do is I paint so you guys get an idea of what I'm doing. And then off camera I finish it um, to the desired kind of like look I want. Because it takes a long time. Uh, because we're using such thin paint it takes a while to get uh, to the desired kind of look you want. And it probably, for all these wings, it probably took me a good two hours or so. Probably more. Just for this one wing. This one side. Not both sides. Just this one side. And it's all about putting time into it. But as you see, it's almost effortless. You just do it. it it's really simple. Um, right? Don't, don't think you can't do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Right? Look at it. Look at how easy that is. All I'm doing is just moving the brush. Look at that. Okay? So just spend the time and, and take your time. Don't rush. There's no reason to rush painting a model. Unless... You don't want it to look good. You're just trying to paint it as fast as you can. Right? So, like, every model you do, just if you want to make it look as good as you can possibly make it, just take your time. And uh, I'm sure you could get frustrated and whatever. Um, but, like, you know, you just got to... If you get frustrated while you're painting... Just take a chill pill, take a break, go watch a movie, go run a marathon. Just go do something other than painting. Get your mind away from painting, so that way you can come back with kind of like a fresh mind. Um, so I've added a little bit of white to the, uh, to the gray, and that's what this is. And... Uh, one thing to note is as I actually keep going up in brightness, I actually change the consistency of the paint. So we started doing maybe five parts water to, uh, to about one part paint. But uh, you want to, as you get into white, which is actually what this is, I guess I lied. This isn't white mixing with something. This is pure white. Um, when you get into that color, in this brightness, you you want to thin it down more, maybe to six to eight parts, and just take your time doing more layers. 
because the more layers you do, first off, the better the blend, and secondly, uh, the cleaner it's going to look. And uh, you're not going to get chalkiness. You just keep going. If you get chalkiness, just keep doing layer after layer after layer after layer until uh, it, it looks good. Okay? Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm actually going back and I'm uh, taking my black and uh, I I'm kind of reintroducing the idea of shading and the reason for that is is because I'm trying to create a better blend and the way you do that is by going back and forth between the two colors now because I've already created the gradation of paint uh, what I want to do now is make sure the blend is seamless I want to make sure it's a proper blend and doesn't just look like crap now you may notice these little uh, white things of above the little tiny feathers and that's because I was taking my time and I was trying to rush it or wasn't taking my time I was trying to rush it and uh, I don't really care because I can go over those little ones afterwards I'm only trying to focus on the big ones because they're more important so once you get a basic idea then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in uh, I used codex gray and you're gonna glaze over the the midtone so where you want the blend to be you're gonna glaze over that and what this is gonna do is this is going to really make those blends seamless it's gonna make it so the transition is completely uh, unable to be seen by the human eye uh, well not necessarily completely unable to be seen but it makes it kinda hard to pick up especially from say a foot away it'll look like so nice right as you can see there it already kinda looks really nice I think anyways and uh, one thing to mention and I really apologize for this actually is uh, if you if you've looked at the other side of the wings you can see that they kinda have like this bluish tint to them and, uh, well, I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this video, and there's a reason. Um, I actually kind of forgot how I did that, because I actually painted these wings, like, a few months ago. So I kind of forgot how I did it, and, uh, this is actually a really good lesson to you guys, and to myself, uh, to write things down. I normally do it, but because this wasn't like, you know, a commission or whatever, I didn't really care. So, I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. And, uh, so unfortunately I won't be doing that. I will still be trying to figure it out on the side, so when I do figure it out, I will let you guys know. And when that happens, then you guys can make your wings look like whatever. But I'm pretty sure I just glazed um, a blue color. Like a really thin down blue color. And uh, But right now, all I'm doing is just uh, Codex Gray. Just kind of making uh, the mid-tones kind of come out. As you can see, it's looking fantastic. I think it looks fantastic. I don't mean to brag or anything, but uh, it makes me happy when I can produce something that I really quite, I can look at and be like, man, I'm really proud of this. And this isn't even like the end, kind of, like you can edge highlight uh, every feather just using white, and that'll make it stand out like really hardcore and it'll make it look really nice or you could just stick with just this blending and uh, that'll look fine there's nothing wrong with that uh, right now I'm just coming back in with the black and making sure that that part of the blend is looking adequate and you want to go back and forth go from black to gray to white to gray to black to white to gray right whatever um, just keep going back and forth until it looks right to you
right? And come at it from different angles. You may have noticed that I, I like went up and then I went on a weird side angle and then I came in from below and went up on an angle and all this weird stuff. And coming in from the multiple angles will actually help the blend. It'll make it come out uh, more, I guess the word is more correct, more right. I don't even know what word I'm looking for. But uh, it, it'll make the blend uh, more seamless, I guess, because uh, the pigment's getting a chance to cover the whole area as opposed to being pushed into one single area like we're doing right there. But when you're blending the mid-tones, you want to really kind of focus on that. So it's almost there. Um, And once again, if you guys have any like ideas of, of stuff you want to see, just post it down below in a comment or send me a personal message. Like I'm willing to, to help you guys out. It really doesn't bother me. Uh, if you, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but whenever you guys send a comment, I'm actually pretty quick to respond. Uh, it's because I have no life and I just sit on my computer. But... Uh, <laughs> But I, I really want to help you guys out. Like, my goal is to make it so you guys can paint miniatures and be happy about it, right? Get rid of the frustration. Uh, make it so it's not just part of a game, that it's it's a hobby itself. Right? I don't really even play the game. I just, I just paint the miniatures because that's what I like to do. And I'm sure there are lots of you who are... Uh, <clears throat> who are in the same boat. Right, and as I said, just go back and forth until it looks right. And that, uh, that gray part was looking a little funky, so just coming back in and added some more white. Alright guys, it's pretty much coming to a close. Uh, I apologize about the no blue thing. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I hope you're excited for the other parts. The next part of the Sanguinor is going to be the sword. So get ready. Be excited.